Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 5 of the Endless Runner mini-series. In this episode, we are going to set up our floor tile actor by creating a C++ base class and declaring and initializing all its necessary actor components. Then we are creating a blueprint based on that C++ class, setting the mesh and configure the floor tile so that we are able to infinitely spawn our tiles in the next episode. But before we get right into class generation, I want to show you the final floor tile piece and explain how the me mechanics of it works. So let's have a look. Here you can see the final floor tile. It has several actor components, like a scene component, a mesh component, several arrow components, and lastly one box component that acts as a trigger box. So let's start with the scene component first. This component acts as a root component. As you might remember from our run character from last episodes, he has a capsule component that serves as his root component. In case of the floor tile, we need the scene component to be able to move all the other components locally. Let me show you what that means. So, as you can see, I can move the mesh component locally to the scene component. The same goes for like the different arrow components, the trigger box, and so on. If let's say we would make our floor mesh the chosen root component, we would not be able to move or rotate the mesh locally. But we must do that to configure our floor tile. So for you to remember, if you have a root component, that root component cannot be translated. That means it cannot be moved, rotated or scaled locally in that blueprint. That is why we create those scene components to act as the root component. So, and this is what we are going to create in C++, all these components. So now next, the, the arrow components. We have attach point, it's still called spawn point center left and right here, but we will call it left lane, center lane and right lane later on. And you might be wondering what the heck are these for? And these components will be used as a position indicator to get that components transform in local or world space so that we can then later on spawn opticals, coins on those lanes, or for example, let's say the attach point. This is the point where basically the next tile will be spawned at. And the last component to mention is the box component. It acts like as a trigger, that once the character runs through, a new floor tile will be spawned and the floor piece that triggered the spawning will be destroyed after two seconds. So this should give you a glimpse of how this floor piece works, what we will do and what all these components are that we are going to set up. And I think now let's start by implementing it. Okay, so now back in our project, let's right click in the C++ classes, create a new C++ class from actor and call it floor tile. And let's create that class. Okay, so Unreal has generated the class files. Here we are in Writer, and we can see our floor tile with the basic constructor, begin, play, and tick. So what you've seen is that we now need to create those components, those several components. Let's go into the public section down here, and let's create a new property, make it visible anywhere. So for components, it's always good to make them visible anywhere. And blueprint read only. And maybe give them the category of components, like you've seen in the other videos as well. So now we start with our root component, which is a U scene component. Like all components, it's a pointer. We call it scene component. And let's create all the other ones. So copy that. It's going to be the same for all components. So next is the floor mesh. This is a static mesh component. A pointer and call it floor mesh. Next one are the three lane arrow components or the arrow components for the three lanes. So it's a U arrow component. You can see it here. And this one we call 
Oh, the first one. Of course, we need our attach point as well before we do the lanes. So, attach point, then another U arrow component will be the center lane. And next arrow component will be right lane. And the last one will be left lane. And now the final component that we need was that box component for the trigger. So this is called a box component. And we call it floor trigger box. So I did a little mistake because I didn't forward include all that stuff, which I should do. It's a good thing to point out. Or what we can do instead of typing it everywhere, because we like have like four arrow components, we just on top of the U class, we specify this. We can do the same thing here with the static mesh component and the scene component. And of course the box component. And you can see that writer included automatically these components. Let's delete this because we forward declared and we include these in the CPP file later on, but not in the header file. And so we have our four different components forward declared. We can remove these here and this should compile perfectly. Now let's go to the CPP file. And as you have seen in another episode where we created those components, you remember you need create default sub object to create components. So let's start with our scene component equals create default sub object from a U scene component, give it a text, call it scene, and then say, root component equals scene component. So this is how we set the scene component as the root component. And now let's create the other ones. Let's start with the floor, create default sub object. This is a U static mesh component. Give it a text, call it floor mesh. And so now we attach the floor mesh to the scene component with setup attachment, like we maybe remember from last episodes, and tell it the scene component, or you could also get call get root component, it's the same. Let's do it like this. Now the attach point equals create default sub object. It's a U arrow component, text, attach point, attach point, set up attachment to the scene component. So you might see now that the static mesh component and scene component, they are included already through these actor and core minimal H files. But for the arrow component, writer automatically included this. So if you're using Visual Studio, you will probably have to do this by hand. So you can find most of these components, not all of them, but most of these components under components and then the name without the U. So error component or static mesh component or whatever. So that's how you can find them. Let's just copy this because for the most error components it's the same center lane center lane and call it center lane and do it for the right and the left. Just copy this. It's a bit easier, faster. Right lane and the left lane. and call this left lane. 
And then the last component that we need to create is the trigger box. So call it floor trigger box equals create default sub object. And with this one, we are also initializing some values as you can see in a second. So this is a U box component. Give it a text. Floor trigger box. Then we set up the attachment and you can see again, he included the box component. It's under components like the other one. And we say scene component. And now the trigger box has a field or a vector, like a box extent, it's called box extent. And these are basically the dimensions of the box. And we are going to set default values here in CPP file. You can change them in blueprints later on, of course, but here we initially set the default values. So the box extent function has a vector as an input and we specify 32.f, 500.f, and 200.f. And you can see once we create these, the blueprint based on that class, you can see that the dimensions of that trigger box are already set. And one thing we need to do, and I get back to that when we create the blueprint, so we need to set the collision profile name. And this is based on collision. And I showed once we create that blueprint specifically, it basically sets which actors and, and so on can collide with it and not. So what we want with this box is that it's triggered only when a pawn is colliding with that box. So set collision profile name. We need a text for that. And there's a profile name specified overlap only pawn. So let's compile this and go back to the editor once it's compiled, where I will show you how I came about with this name or where you can find these names. Let's compile this because we need to create the blueprint as well. So once it compiled, we go back to the editor and under edit project settings, if we go to collision under engine, you can see preset values for collision. And there you can see those names that you can find already defined in Unreal. And here we have our overlap only pawn. And it basically shows which has these default value sets. It's a template system or profile that you can choose and set in blueprints or with the function name in C++. So this is where you find those names. And for the trigger box, we need the overlap only pawn profile. So let's go under blueprints create a new blueprint class under all classes type in floor tile select this one call it bp floor tile save it open it up and here you can see already our box already defined with the box extent so we have our floor mesh we have our attach point center lane right lane left lane and floor trigger box so let's add first our floor mesh can see here things are a little bit messed up at the beginning because we are importing our mesh and for it to work we need to move it rotate it and that's why I said it's important that it's under a scene component under the root component so that we have the possibility to do that so you can do this manually or uh, just use the numbers that I have so the position in X should be thousand zero in Y point seven and C and then we need to rotate it 90 degrees. And so now we have our mesh. Let's do the trigger box. It should be at the other side. So the position should be 1050. It goes here and the C value a little bit higher, 160. So that once the character runs through, it's, it has a little bit space between and it's up so that you can't miss that box. So now we have all these arrows that we need to attach. So all these arrows are on the same spot, so you can't see them all. But if I move this, now this is the attach point and the attach point is at 1000 X. So exactly at that position. And once we spawn those floor tiles, every tile 
will be spawned at exactly this position. And because we are using this blueprint, which we hooked up and set all the values, so this will work fine. It will attach each floor after the other. And now we just need to hook up the lane arrows. And these are basically the center point of each lane. And this is for the center, it's 500 and 30. For the right lane, it's 500 and the Y is 325 and the left lane is 500 and minus 325 and the C value I forgot is 30 and the same one for the right lane so basically we have each little bit above the floor tile and it's hooked up like this now we can compile and this should be all for this episode and now we, we created our floor tile, the base class, the base blueprint that we are then later on spawning. So I guess this is a good time to take a break here. So thank you for watching and please like and subscribe this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment. And I guess then I see you next video.